Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors. With James Holst and Pat McSherry and the rest of the IDO fishing team. We're headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. Look at that fish. This is In-Depth Outdoors. Welcome to this week's episode of In-Depth Outdoors. I'm Pat McSherry. And on this episode, we're headed to northern Minnesota, the Cass Lake area, and I'm meeting up with Connor Kleist, and we're going to chase eel pout. And eel pout are one of those species that have gotten insanely popular in the last three or four years. Uh, you used to never really hear about anybody targeting them, but they've gained a lot of traction and a lot of popularity here in the last few years. So we're headed up there to chase pre-spawn burbot up in northern Minnesota. Is this the zone here? Yeah, kind of right out in front, this little finger runs out, and then it gets nice and tight on this inside turn up in here. All right, we're just getting set up for the night. Uh, came up and met Connor up here in northern Minnesota, and we're gonna chase burbot today, or tonight, I should say, and uh, well, it should be pretty fun. We got really mild temperatures finally, and uh, it's easy getting around on the lakes up here. So we're set up right now on the inside corner of a point that meets up with the shoreline break. And hopefully as we get towards evening, these burbot are gonna come up and uh, visit this shallow water. So it should be fun. sun hits the trees and you know you're sitting there waiting like oh when are they gonna show up when are they gonna show up and sure enough got a little bit darker that one came up he actually came up you know a foot or two off the bottom which this time of year when they're kind of in that pre-spawn mood a lot of times those fish will you know they won't be hugging the bottom like a lot of guys tend to think that they do they're actually up a little bit higher and they're a lot more aggressive I'm guessing that's what we got here. Oh yeah, nice pout. Grab him here. There we go. It's a good first one of the night right there. Cool looking fish and they're a heck of a lot of fun to catch. I tell you what, nice looking fish. And carrying a bunch of eggs there, fun stuff. All right, we'll get them back. You know, and I haven't done a ton of this bird fishing. I've caught plenty of them while targeting walleyes. And in the springtime, usually a couple trips a year, I'll target eel pout. And one of my go-tos are just something that glows really well. I started off with a VMC Flash Champ spoon there and a green UV, but that one came in and smoked it. So hopefully that's a sign of good things to come, huh? Yeah, the moon's getting high. Sun's going down, usually means burbot are starting to come on out. Mm -hmm. Seeing my bottom get kind of quivery, and usually with these burbot, there he is. Nice. Usually these burbot, they're hanging out on those steep breaks, so you get a lot of dead zone. Oh, not a big one, but another guy, little guy, feisty. Probably why he came back twice for it, but. He was mad at it. Cool fish, show you all sizes, little and small. But they just got cool colors on them. A lot of heart, a lot of spunk, we'll get them back. All right. But what I was saying was, is uh, there's a lot of dead zone where you're fishing, a lot of steep breaks. You fish really uh, adjacent to deep water, 
uh, really steep shelves. So you get some dead zone, even if you're 18 to 20 foot of water. Uh, when it's real steep, your cone angle's just catching underneath you. So you might have a little bit of dead zone. So you're not necessarily marking all the fish that are coming in. So you'll see a little quiver on the bottom. A lot of times kind of slow down your motion uh, on the bottom there. And a lot of times those fish come in and eat you. So a lot of fun. Let's see if we can get a bigger one. At Eskimo, we have the tools to help you enjoy your time on the ice. They say man needs food, clothing, and shelter. When it comes to shelter, we like the Outbreak 450i with its full-size no-trip door that's nearly 74% bigger than a standard door, making it much easier to load and unload. With 75 square feet of fishable area, you'll be warm and comfortable during your day on the ice. Check out the Outbreak 450i and our full line of products at GetEskimo.com. From the first time you pick up a tuned up custom rod, you'll know you're holding something special. A rod not mass produced, but built one at a time by the hands of gifted craftsmen. Rods like the Precision, ice fishing's most versatile multi-species rod, or the Precision Noodle with a tip so sensitive you'll never fish a spring bobber again. And the Commander, the rod that's never met a big fish it couldn't best. Tuned up custom rods, ice rods handcrafted for you and the way you fish. Reed's Family Outdoor Outfitters in Walker, Minnesota has the hottest products for ice fishing at unbeatable prices. Everything from ice electronics, ice shelters, and ice clothing from all the top brands. And the newest lithium-powered augers with special everyday pricing on the Garmin LiveScope Ice Bundle. Whether you're visiting us in Walker, Minnesota, or placing an order online at reedsports.com, our state-of-the-art distribution center ensures you'll get your order fast. Reed's Family Outdoor Outfitters offers the best service, best price, best advice, guaranteed. Eat it. Yeah. Whammo. Man, that's fun. That one showed up right on me. <laughs> I tell you what, I mean, the only bad part about these fish is this time of year, early in the season, you do have to fish them at night, but man, for an aggressive fish, big, heavy, fight hard, they're fun. Boy, they do not like coming up the hole. <laughs> Come on, buddy. More of the same, more of the same. There we go. <laughs> that is just a beautiful fish. And you can see he just chomped that flash champ. We got a super hard mouth, so usually if you pin them, they don't come off. Super fun to catch, aggressive, come in after big spoons, big baits. Basically, we're just using walleye tackle. I'm using my commander, and they put up a tussle. All right, we get them back. They are slimy. Might have to wash my bibs after tonight. So here's all I'm fishing. I showed it the last time. Just that flash champ, 3 8 ounce. And I'm glowing this thing up like every five minutes just to make sure. You know, it makes a huge difference when you glow these things up. You just hit it like that, and then obviously they glow pretty good. And that's what's attracting them. And then I'm just putting a whole fathead minnow on there, just hanging it vertical. So it's been working good so far. That one showed up like three feet off the bottom again. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, they must really tip up when they're chasing the bait because the mark gets so big and I'm uh -huh. guessing it's their tail. Yep. You know, that big eel tail. Oh, and it's always moving, <laughs> swaying back and forth. It's like catching an eight pound walleye every time. Oh man, that's fun. <laughs> it is. 
Feels like another good one. And man, it's hard to get them to turn up that oh. hole. I'm guessing they're just balled up. Tail first a lot of times. Yeah, and they, it's hard to get them started, but just keep a little pressure on them. Another nice, another nice pout. Really good average size on them so far. Beautiful fish. Pop that hook out, just like that. Another nice big greasy pout. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Pre-spawn. Mm -hmm. Pre-spawn, nice and aggressive. They're chasing baits. You know, the, the kind of the conception or what everybody thinks about eel pout is they're bottom hugging fish and you know, they'll, you gotta be right on the bottom to catch them. But man, I tell you what, the last three that I've seen show up, they're showing up at least a foot off and then they're chasing me up just like a walleye would. So it's fun. In-depth outdoors, spot on the spot ID. On this week's spot on the spot ID, I'm gonna give a quick explanation of the areas that we were targeting eel pout out there. And one of the first things I'll note is if you're looking to see if a lake has eel pout in it, a lot of times uh, the surveys won't actually show those fish because they're not in a very susceptible area for them to actually catch in their trapping nets. Uh, a lot of times they spend most of their year out in pretty deep water. But if the lake has cisco or whitefish and it's a deeper body of water, more than likely it probably has eel pout as well. So this time of year, mid to late winter, getting into spring, eel pout are starting to move up to shallow water. They're one of the only species that actually spawn under the ice. And the areas that they like to spawn are gonna be hard bottom and gravelly type areas. So the areas that we're gonna look for are gonna be steep breaks and flats that have a hard bottom. Now this part of this lake right here, I know this is all hard gravel bottom. These are big areas where they're gonna probably stage to spawn. So this time of year, basically what we're doing is we're treating it just like walleye structure. We're looking for areas that we can kind of pinpoint or funnel fish by you, giving you the best chance to get your bait in front of them. So little points inside corners are gonna be awesome areas to target. And then as it gets later on in the evening, way into dark, a lot of times you can move right up on top of these flats and target them up there. So our best areas for that first hour, we're definitely kind of on these inside corners, on the steep breaks in that 16 to 18 feet of water. And then as we got deeper into the night, we caught a lot more fish more up on top of the flats. So if you're looking to get out here in the next couple of weeks, Use these ideas to get on some pout. Available in six technique specific models. The new custom series spinning rods from Akuma offer tournament grade performance at a price all anglers can afford. Built on SCT blank technology featuring a dual helix carbon fiber wrap, Deadeye custom series rods offer an ultra responsive blank that will handle the biggest walleye on your favorite bodies of water. Find the Deadeye custom series at your favorite sporting goods store today and see for yourself why Akuma is inspired fishing. Does your sonar offer dual spectrum chirp, producing razor sharp images on an ultra bright HD display? The ability to tailor the display to the way you fish. Precision GPS functionality with legendary Lake Master mapping to move effortlessly from ice to open water. If not, you should be fishing an Ice Helix, the electronic system that offers all the features and performance successful ice anglers demand, only from Humminbird. Introducing Suffix Advanced Fluorocarbon. A new level of suppleness. A new level of toughness. A new level of sensitivity. A new category of fluorocarbon. Hello Future. Come 
shit. Oh, he's a big one. Oh, there's two of them. Got him. Look at you. <laughs> the hot. I got the lucky hole. I right know. Now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> drill one right next to it. You can get your own deuce here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got we got some oh. spinach going. Oh no, he's coming up tail first. <laughs> Get up here! There he is. <laughs> Boy, I made a production out of that. Another nice fish. It's been just kind of pretty steady, you know. We haven't had like uh, you know a super hot flurry or anything, but it seems like every. 15 minutes or so, one comes through and every one that I've marked has bit. So it's not like you're really having to coax them or work them a lot. They're just coming in and eating it. So super fun. Get back down there. You know, in most of the lakes that have uh, really good populations of these eel pout are gonna be in the northern half of the state for the most part. Uh, the deeper bodies of water, uh, clear water, and usually if they'll have kind of tulabies or ciscos in them, they're pretty much gonna have eel pout, right? Yep. Yeah. In the summer and most of the times of the year when they're not spawning or in pre-spawn mode, they're out in pretty deep water. I know I've caught them in the fall before uh, out in 50, 60 feet of water. So that's kind of where they spend a lot of their time. Come on, buddy. Hey. hey. Nice. Come on, buddy. Get that water bouncing. There he comes head first. It's they hard are to grab them. The, Oh yeah, good for a good cold hand. There we go. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, a little butterball. There we go. Cool fish. And there goes what I'm using right there. Three ace VMC. Just kind of a big old jig, single hook, big sucker on it. Pretty fish. God, they're cool. And a fun fight. You just see, they get kind of scarred up. You'll notice on some of them, all them zebra mussels. And, uh, you know, they're a bottom dwelling fish, you typically think. But, I mean, these fish, you know, you think blind as a bat, uh, they really can follow a bait really well. And uh, a fun fish to fight, fun fish to catch. And a fun one to let back and let her go do her thing. Thanks, honey. Cool. We've noticed a lot of times uh, we'll have one fish come through and you'll kind of get a hot hole for a couple of minutes, whether it's a pot of fish that are kind of a wolf pack up feeding together, whatever it is. But I'm going to hurry up, get a minnow back on, and uh, see if I can get another one. No, oh, I missed him. Get back here. <laughs> Got him. You gotta love it when they'll come back and eat it. <laughs> Some days it's like you can't do any wrong. Uh, that's just a little guy. But he was still fun. Grab my hook outs. Pop that bait out. A little juvenile one. I'm guessing a male. So right now I think it's about seven o'clock. You know, it's only been dark for probably an hour and a half, so it has been pretty super steady action. As soon as that sun hit the trees, gave it about half an hour and they started biting. And you were saying, Connor, they start, they'll start feeding a lot more during the day, the later into the spawn we get. They'll, they'll be up on your, on your pieces of structure uh, more during the day, get closer to spawn here in a couple of weeks. Right now, uh, fish are, they're cruising pretty quick. They're out, they're out feeding. Pre-spawn, they're out looking. Uh, you'll see them kind of all over in the water column even as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Pretty good indicator that it's pre-spawn. Those fish are out eating right now, but uh, coming in a couple of weeks, they're going to push up uh, and be up shallow on that sand and on those zebra mussels out chasing and trying to spawn. So you catch them up shallow a lot more during the day come here in a couple of weeks in March. So if you're looking to get out in the next week or two, uh, definitely pay attention to maybe daytime bites too. It might not just be a nighttime thing. So I'm gonna grab another minnow, get down there. 
Randall GM in Aiken, Minnesota's only haggle-free Chevrolet, Buick, and GMC dealer is a proud sponsor of In-Depth Outdoors TV. Our Brandle value price ensures that you don't have to spend your entire day haggling to get a great deal. And every new vehicle comes with our exclusive gimmick-free lifetime powertrain warranty. Whether you're in need of service, sales, parts, or body shop repair, stop by our state-of-the-art facility in Aiken or visit us 24-7 at BrandleGM.com. With the release of the Tungsten Bullfly Jig from BMC, your panfish presentation just got buggier. By creating a spot-on invertebrate imitator destined to fool the most wary panfish, the Tungsten Bullfly Jig is available in nine colors to further accommodate today's angler, including four metallic finishes and five Ultra Glow colors, which hold a charge up to 15 minutes. This winter, match the hatch and outsmart the most finicky panfish with the BMC Bullfly Jig. Glacial Lakes Dock is now Glacial Lakes Recreation. Located in Starbuck, Minnesota, we offer the same great location, staff, and service with a new name to better fit our ever-expanding business. As an authorized dealer and service center for Yeti and now Alumalite Ice Houses, we have you covered if you're looking for a new house or just need a little service. Stop in today or check us out online at glaciallakesrec.com and make this ice season your most enjoyable and comfortable ever. Him. He followed it about five feet off the bottom before he finally ate it. I don't think it's a real big one, but take any one I can get right now. There we go. Nice fish there. Getting to be a little bit later in the night now. I think it's about 8.30. We had a little bit of a dry spell, maybe uh, half an hour, 45 minutes where we didn't have any bites and really didn't have much action. But I'm sure you get kind of just like walleye fishing or any low light predator. There's definitely like some peak feeding times and I'm sure one of those peak feeding times is kind of that first hour of dark. They're gonna be the most active and then maybe things will settle down and then throughout the night you might get a couple more feeding windows, but all right, we'll get them back. There we go. Ooh, feels a little better. Oh, yeah. They make you get your hands cold, that's for <laughs> they, sure. They're good at that. Yes, they are. I'll lift them like a bass. Cool. Another nice fish. I'm using actually half a sucker. I just glue that up, and it seems, you know, every five, 10 minutes or so, make sure that that's blown up and those fish really, I mean, they're not, they don't have the best eyesight, so they really key in on uh, the little things. So it's important to stay up with your glowing, but another beautiful fish there. So actually, we kind of moved up a little bit from uh, where we were fishing. We we're a little bit closer to the deep water, and now it's getting a little bit later in the night. I think it's close to 10 o'clock or so. And uh, we've pushed up, you know, we're only in about 15 to 17 feet of water here. We moved up on the sand a little bit. And uh, these fish, you know, they're not in huge, big groups, but they're spread out, they're feeding heavy, big gut on her, getting ready to spawn. It's cool, leopard colors. They got all sorts of names, but I think they're just pretty cool fish. So we'll get her back. There's one. Slime me. Dubkey. You're on? Look at that. <laughs> They're as close to a double as you can get anyways. Cool. Need a hand? I got him. All right. It has, you know, I think I had that hot hole out a little bit deeper in like that 21 foot. Yep. Earlier on in the day and, or early on in the night, I should say. And as we've gotten later, it seems like the shallower holes have definitely been producing better. Boy, are they hard to get out. <laughs> That one came in and thumped it actually. Like he came in and I missed him and he got my bait. I know he did. <laughs> he got my bait and what I ended up doing, cause I didn't want to reel up and rebait while he was still down there. I, I actually pounded the bottom like six or seven times and then got him to chase back up and just eat it on a reaction strike. So obviously, yeah, they can see well enough to, mm -hmm. 
go after and chase a bait like that. There we go. Coming on strong with that VMC moon eye. I'm, I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm not to you yet, but there we go. Hey, oh, that's a good one. That is a good one. Heck yeah. You can see how I ate that. Cool. No, that is a nice one. That might be the biggest one of the night. Yeah, Longest. That's right up there. A nice fish. Oh, that be, wind. Be interesting to know how old that fish is. I think there's a lot of unknowns when it comes to these fish. Right. And that's kind of what's what's fun about getting out here and chasing them. But one thing I do know is it's a heck of a fight. And it's just funny. You get out here, it's kind of, you know, you feel uh you can see the light at the end of the tunnel of winter, yeah. in a sense, and still get out, catch some big fish once walleye season's closed, and cool. All oh, right, what else are you gonna do this time of year? I mean, it's I enjoy catching fish like that more than panfish, you know. It it it's a good fight, and I mean honestly, it feels like an eight ten pound walleye every time. So, right. and you get to get covered up in slime like this. So, <laughs> wipe it all over yourselves, and that's that's just what it's all about. Beautiful. It's crazy how much the popularity of burbot fishing has gotten in the last three or four years. It has blown up. It truly has blown up, and for good reason. Uh, it'd be fun to see where the sport goes, and uh, I think it's there's only good things to come. So, mm -hmm. but we'll get her back to let her go do her thing. Look at that, a fistful. <laughs> cool let the slime drip. All right, that's gonna do it for this week's <laughs> cool. episode. Had a ton of fun out there in the late night chasing those burbot. And we had a really good flurry there for the first hour and a half. Kind of got a little bit slower throughout the night, but we were still able to pick off fish all the way until two in the morning when we called it quits. So big thanks to Connor Kleist for spending the night out there with me, and we'll see you all next week. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at Indepth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.